Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. I want to share with you a vivid memory I have from my prison work. We sat in a circle, a bunch of students from the outside, from the university, and a bunch of stu students from the inside, incarcerated women. Together, we share, share reflections and readings, thoughts, and hopes for those incarcerated. One particular night, we were celebrating Michelle's furlough. She was going home for a long weekend. She was so excited. That was the result of good conduct in prison. So we were happy for her. We asked her to promise us to come back to the class and share everything about the long weekend with family and friends. She promised she would come back, but she never did. Michelle overdosed the weekend, she passed away, and our circle was broken. The story of Michelle is not unique to women in prison. I met many of them with a very similar story. Michelle was young, vulnerable, she was heartbroken and self-medicated. She had a long history of abuse, all forms of abuse, emotional, physical, and sexual. But more than anything, she was lonely. Nobody was there to help Michelle when she needed it the most. My passion for prison sociology started in graduate school. I was very interested in the fact that, uh, in spite of the huge body of literature that um, sociologists and criminologists had already developed, the vast majority of readings uh, were on men. Duh, you would say, of course, because more than 90% of those incarcerated are men. So women represent less than 8% of those in prisons in America. But it is not an insignificant number. There's still a large group. And studying women in prison is especially important because the fate of women in prison cannot be considered in disconnect from the future of the children. Think about all we study about child attachment, child bonding, child development. When it comes to incarcerated women, their lives is what determines all those outcomes for their kids. So that should keep us awake at night, right? It should. It is important to know that um, unlike men, the majority of women incarcerated are mothers. And unlike men, they are more likely um, to be solely responsible for their kids. 62% of the women incarcerated have children under the age of 18. This seems to be very problematic. Since, 19, since the 1970s, um, the United States has experienced a very rapid growth in incarceration rates. The graph that you see behind me shows you exactly what happened since 1978 all the way through 2008, four, decade, four decades of very rapid growth. That was mostly due to the war on drugs. So perhaps you feel more positive than I do. Perhaps you say, okay, the war, on drugs is, the war on drugs is over, we put it in the back, we're not going there anymore, we're moving forward. And perhaps uh, you also see that uh, um, past 2008, uh, rates of incarceration for both men and women seem to have stabilized somehow. Um, in, for some years, we actually see a decline. But you can also see that uh, the growth in incarceration rates uh, um, has been much higher for women than for men. In fact, between 1978 and 2008, the incarceration rates for women grew by 134%, whereas those for men 
grew by 400%. There is something else that this picture doesn't tell you, that in spite of the fact that we see some stabilization in rates of incarceration, uh, and maybe some decline, 17 states are still experiencing a growth, and the growth in women's rates is outpacing that of men's. And what is more dramatic is that in eight states, including Indiana, women's incarceration rates are continuing to grow at the same time that incarceration rates for men are declining significantly. This is the result of criminal justice reforms. They are targeting men, and they are well-serving men, but they're not keeping women out of prison. So we need to focus on that. We need to advocate for women especially. In my research that I developed with co-authors, um, I focused on um, national random samples of women and men in state prisons. I've used statistical techniques uh, to identify um, specific patterns in the study of incarceration, re-entry, and adaptation to prison. And I have found that uh, women, more than men, tend to be um, um, the victim of abuse uh, prior to incarceration and during incarceration. I also found that uh, women are more likely to um, suffer from mental health problems, substance abuse, and a plethora of other problems. I also found that uh, women are more resilient than men. Incarcerated women are more resilient than incarcerated men in the sense that uh, in spite of the past abuses, they are very unlikely to develop um, violent behavior, being incarcerated because of violent behavior. They are also more likely to develop pro-social skills uh, while adapting to the prison system and complete rehabilitation programs when they're given the opportunity. Yet, rehabilitation programs for women are almost inexistent. Those that are there are inefficient, inadequate, and very antiquated. So we need more of that. I learned a lot through my past research, but this is nothing compared to what I plan to learn in my future research. I am currently designing a study that draws upon the, uh, the powers of um, intersectionality, um, a theory that teaches us that while women might all experience marginalization, especially those incarcerated, we are unable to tell the story unless we focus on the intersection of race, poverty, sexual orientation, motherhood, and many other personal experiences. So I don't have anything else to tell you, but until I have results, please keep fighting for our own sisters. Thank you very much. Thanks for your support.